Good afternoon, how's everybody doing out there? Reggie Redfern here guys and uh, in this video uh, I'm going to get right to the point because I want to discuss something with you guys that I found profoundly interesting and to, to me is very fundamental in the understanding of money. Um, I think that money is a, a, a something that, you know, you got some people who feel like it's unimportant. I think that's a bunch of hogwash. So let's just go ahead and, I'm sorry to say it that bluntly, but money's important. And if money is important, then knowledge of money is important. You know, if, if you don't have an, the amount of money that you want or uh, the amount of money that you need, you know, uh, a, a large part of that I have come to find in my journey that this is largely due to a miseducation of money or about money. You understand? Uh, uh, we haven't had that type of education, the common man. Okay. And so what I'm going to discuss in this video is a very interesting uh, uh, cycle uh, of money uh, that I first learned. I was first exposed to this probably back in like 2010. Y'all have to excuse me fighting a little cold. I know that sounds horrible. Um, but uh, I, I was first exposed to this around 2010. I was doing some research into the history of money and, and gold and what was going on in the monetary world. And I come across a gentleman named uh, Philip Judge. Philip Judge is his name. Philip Judge is a, uh, I, you know, he's an all around student of the game of money. He is a gold guy. You know, um, so he's a very interesting guy, uh, a wealth of knowledge. You know, uh, he's a wealthy man himself. So, um, but he's the first person that exposed me to this information. Now, since then, I've seen it a number of times and, and presented slightly different. Okay, and my presentation may be slightly different if you've seen something like this before. But what we are going to talk about today that I'm going to uh, kind of, uh, I like to use the word expose that I'm going to expose in this uh, this short video series is what we're going to do here. This is going to be a few videos. But what we are going to discuss here are the seven stages of money. And this uh, cycle, this cycle that I'm about to reveal to you guys, this cycle has been, has, it's, it's, you know, it's stood the test of time. This is the cycle that money has gone through through every civilization for almost 6,000 years now, okay? Uh, 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 certainly gone through this cycle almost verbatim where it pertains to uh, uh, money and governments for at least 2,500 years, okay? Um, I, I'll get into all of that in, 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 in stage one, okay? But what I want to do is kind of give you all a preset and I had to make some notes here because I didn't want to leave anything out and I probably still will. There are always thoughts and things that uh, I want to reveal to you all and they, they get lost in the sauce, but either way it goes. So let's kind of start with a preset here. All right. Um, first, we're going to start with a society. Okay. So this is the all before the meat. Okay. You have a, uh, and I just want to kind of set the stage. You have a, a, a place and you have people who, who eventually gather to this particular place. This is the beginning of a civilization or society. You know, people begin to gather into one place, right? And those people begin to uh, create wealth or create things of value. Well, how do they do that? Okay, well, here's a nugget. You know, guys, I hate to say it like this because... Um, it's contrary to Western civilization or you know, Western economics or whatever you want to call it, but wealth is created at its core. Wealth is created by mankind, you, myself, other men, women, putting our hands to work in the ground, labor. Man puts his labor to the physical earth and that's what creates wealth, labor. That blew my mind because we live in a society where we say, listen, don't work hard, work smarter. Working hard doesn't make you the money. And it may not in this day and age, and we just have to deal with that, right? But we're going back into the earliest of civilizations, the beginning of a civilization, and certainly when things were pure and free, 
Okay, each man had to go out and produce something. Some man produced grain, some man produced vegetables, some man raised cattle, some men became masons and produced bricks, and some man was a timber man and he cut wood and created things out of wood and uh, you know, uh, uh, and they built things. And as you go through time, what you find is you're the bread man and I'm the brick man. Okay, well you need some bricks, I need some bread, therefore we would trade. This is a free market, and a free market, uh, and a lot of times it looks like a barter system. There is nothing more free than a barter system because if I don't need your bread or your beans or your vegetables, I don't have to buy them. I don't have to give you my slab of ribs, you see? And so that's how people would trade wealth. These things were valuable. Meat was valuable. Bricks were valuable. Timber was valuable. You see, and so we would trade one another for the things that we needed. Well, there was just one problem that will continue to rise in any barter system as it grows. What happens is I got a huge slab of meat here and you have loaves of bread. Well, your loaf of bread is not of the same value as my slab of meat. I either have to now cut down smaller slabs of meat or get a whole lot of bread from you. This is not conducive to uh, the ease of trade, okay, the, the, to, for things to flow, right? And so what ends up happening is you need, man begins to need some sort of medium of exchange, okay? And there's been many different mediums of exchange. If you'll go back through our history, it, it, you know, they, I'm talking seashells, sticks with notches in them. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of different forms of, of what we call money, which is a medium of exchange. Okay, well, at some point in time in mankind's history, some guy decided to put himself to work on the earth or in the earth in the field of mining. Mining, he would dig into the ground uh, in search of minerals, in search of stones, you know, and things of that nature, fossils. Okay, and this mining man ended up discovering gold and silver, amongst other things that are in the ground. Okay. When we speak of gold and silver, I just want to make a quick note, real quick. I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but a lot of you guys, if you watch my videos or you tune into my blog or something, you 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 uh you already know that um, uh this whole uh, arena of growth for me started with a spiritual journey back in my late teens, early twenties, right? And so recently, I've began restudying the Bible. Um, because I'm a bit older now, I have a different perspective of life, I've experienced different things, and so now I'm studying this book again. I say studying, personal study. This is what I believe people are lacking and need to do even in the spiritual world. Forget about your church. I don't care about what your pastor told you. How much personal study do you do? How much have you read of the Word? Read the Word. So that's what I'm going back and doing over again. I've done it uh, once before in my life where I just started at the beginning and read to the end, and now I'm doing it again, right? And it blew my mind, ironically, when I started, do you guys know that gold, gold is mentioned in the Bible, in Scripture, as early as Genesis chapter 2. Chapter 2. Now, if you know anything about Genesis and the story of creation, you know, hey, chapter 2, you know, hey, we haven't done much, but created man, the earth, all of the things in the earth and the heavens, okay? It's about all that's done in chapter 1. Here comes chapter 2 and already we see gold. Amongst other things, onyx and things like that. Precious stones that according to scripture, God placed in the Garden of Eden in abundance. Gold. How important is gold? I mean, just think about that. That's why I said that. Just give you something to think about. How important is gold, really? <laughs> it must be very important to get mentioned in the second chapter of Genesis. That's just a little uh, side note, okay? But so now we've got people putting their, their, their hands to work in the earth and so forth and so on. We're producing goods, and now this man has discovered these metals, these precious metals called gold and silver. Now, gold and silver eventually became and continued to become the choice of medium of exchange for the uh, 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 services and goods, for the sale of services and goods, okay, uh, amongst a free society, a free market. Why is that the case? Well, one, 
Gold has a very, very, very high and silver intrinsic value. What do we mean by intrinsic value? Okay, intrinsic value means it took some sort of labor to get it. It has true value. The only thing that gives it true value, as I said earlier, is the labor that was put into it to get it out. Food has value not just because you, you need to eat, but because someone had to know how to plant and nurture and cultivate that seed to grow it to food. You're willing to pay that man for the, you know, for the intrinsic value in what he created. Same with bricks. And, you know, the, the masonry men. Okay, well, with gold and silver, it had a very high intrinsic value because you had to mine for this stuff. It's very difficult. A, it's rare. You got to find the gold. Then once you find the precious metals, you got to get it out of the earth. This takes a lot of work, a lot of labor. Uh, it's very difficult to do. It's very risky. And so when you succeed at doing that, you have something that holds a great deal of intrinsic value. I hope that is under, you know, that's clear because that's a very basic thing, intrinsic value. I'll give you an exact, I'll give you a, if I can find my wallet, I'll give you an example of uh, something that does not have intrinsic value, okay? This is simply a dollar bill. Everybody recognizes this. This is a real dollar. It's a dollar bill, okay? This dollar bill has no intrinsic or very little intrinsic value. It's paper. It's paper and ink. I'll get deeper into that later, into our seven stages, but please know that this has no value. What could you do with this if the government did not give it power, give it its value? It has to be given value because at the end of the day, this is a piece of paper with some ink on it. It's probably worth about two cents, I believe is what it's worth, about two cents. Okay, so I'll just stick that in my pocket. So this is why gold and silver became a great medium of exchange. It had a weight to it, and you could always weigh this stuff. If you start mixing gold and silver with other metals, the weights will change, the sounds will change, the appearance of it will change. And so men could trust and recognize gold and silver all over the inhabited earth still to this day. This has been the choice for over 6,000 years. Well, around 2,500 years ago in the Grecian Empire, uh, or a little before the Grecian Empire, but they were the first ones to become an empire thanks to this system uh, of money. And the only thing that changed is it, it, throughout uh, 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 history, what men became able to do is take these precious metals, this gold and silver, and they were able to coin it. Okay? Technology or advancements allow them to be able to coin and make little cylinder, I mean, I'm sorry, little circular coins out of the gold that had a certain weight. You see where I'm going here? And they could, they could inscribe it. They could put the king or the queen or whatever you wanted to put on that gold coin to identify it on that coin. This is what empires then did with the money. Okay, it was used for uh, the sale of exchanges of goods and services as well as taxes and to run the government, so forth and so on. Okay, but this is when gold and silver first became technical money. Okay, whenever it began to be coined, coined into small fractions that could be used for goods and services, and then governments began to use it in the same manner. Before that, you just got people. You know, people exchanging different goods and services and they all recognize gold and use gold. Now we've got a bigger role for gold and silver. It is now money. It is recognized as money all around, okay? So, this is our preset. I wanted to bring you to that point so as to bring you to the point of gold and silver. The seven stages of money. So, what's our first stage? Our first, well, I'm sorry, it's not our first stage. This is our preset. But we've got to understand a basic. Is that as far as money is concerned, there's only two kinds of money. For 6,000 years, the choice of money, free market money that is, that, is, that means what would man and the people who are exchanging the goods and services accept by choice for their goods and services. And this will be gold and silver. It was free market money, and it has been so for almost 6,000 years now, okay? The choice that mankind would choose to exchange their uh, goods and services, all right? So that's where our seven stages of money starts, with gold and silver. 
Um, if you can come up with anything else that is truly, if you know something that I don't, but all I know of, all I've ever studied is the start of money is always gold and silver. And everything since then has been an extension of gold and silver. And so when you think fundamentally and we say, well, what is money at its root? The answer to that question is gold and silver. Those are the only two things that are money. I wonder how well y'all can see my board. I hope you can see my board well, but that's the only two, you know, kinds of money. I get tired of my phone doing this, so I'm sorry, y'all. Let's, uh, let's silence this puppy, because this morning I got started uh, with this video, and I didn't, you know, hey, I was ready to make a video. I started the video, all right? So y'all just stay tuned in. So we're going to go into uh, now... Let's, let's start in this video. Let's go ahead and do stage one, okay? And then we'll go from stage one all the way to stage seven in a series fashion because it's gonna be a little too long if I try to do it all of this in one video. So, we know that we have our gold and our silver as money. We know that, that this gold and silver is being coined, okay, into uh, 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 measurable units of weight and value, all right? So this, in fact, is stage one. This is, in fact, stage one. Stage one is what I call sound money. Okay? We can say sound money. Period. This is stage one. Sound money. What is sound money? We'll call it free market money. It's free market money. Meaning, when, I, when we say free market, I am not talking about what your politicians on TV are talking about every time they use the word free market. Our politicians are lying to us every time they mention free market. The markets aren't free. They are manipulated. They have been manipulated, for, at least certainly in our country, for over a century now. Okay, But markets are typically uh, uh, not free. They're free for a very short amount of time, and then you have powers that be that come in and they begin to manipulate the markets. And once you manipulate it, we're no longer dealing with a free market. Free means um, I am not forced to do anything, to use anything. Okay, I want to go to it's, it's a free market, and you have information. Let's say information because this is all about, you know, I'm an internet marketer and I, I, I market products and I show other people how to make money from home, okay? So, um, so we're dealing with, if we're dealing in this market, let's consider this a free market. I have information and you want this information. Well, I may say I want, I don't want gold. Gold is the, the medium of exchange. Okay, but I happen to be in need of uh, uh, liquor, spirits, and you happen to have spirits. I'll give you my information if you give me those spirits. That's free. We can do it however we choose as long as it is agreement upon the two of us. Okay, but as far as money goes, they, they, many, many women would usually choose uh, 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 gold and silver. 6,000 years. Okay, sound money. The only sound money is gold and silver. We're going to keep coming back to that. I'm going to keep saying that because you need to understand that that's a constant, even today. I'm going to bring it all full circle and you'll understand what I mean by uh, that's a constant, even today. Even today, money is still gold and silver. We've got a whole lot of things all across the world that we're using as mediums of exchange, but true money is still gold and silver. Okay? Now, We've got our free market money. This has always been gold and silver. Or, and this is a big or, and I only mention this uh, now just to give you, uh, I guess, another preset uh, 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 of uh, the bigger story, okay? Because our sound money is free market money being gold or silver or something that is backed by gold and silver. This is where the trick, honestly, begins. The banking trick, the government trick, whenever we have been given something that is backed by gold and silver, this is where the scam starts. This is how the whole game of money begins. 
And if you don't believe money is a game, wait till I'm done with this seven part series and you'll understand that money is a game. And we are playing with game money. Trust me when I tell you we're playing with game money because nobody is walking around with any gold and silver in their pockets and we're not even walking around with anything that's backed by gold and silver in our pockets. Not today. Not today. It's summer 2013. Not today. Okay? So, this is stage one. We have our sound money. Our sound money is the choice of the free markets. Our sound money for 6,000 years has always been gold and silver. The free markets will always choose gold and silver, as long as gold and silver is available, okay? Or we will have something that is backed by gold and silver. Either way it goes, the money, the value, is still knee-deep in gold and silver, okay? So, that is stage one of our seven stages of money. All right. Uh, I'm not going to review it. I hope you've gotten it all. We, we went through a preset. OK, we built ourselves up to a, a, a moving and working society and civilization. Right. A group of people, a mass of people in a concentrated area exchanging different goods and services and things that they provide with one another. OK. And then eventually coming up with a medium of exchange to do that so that I don't have to give you 200 loaves of bread for the equivalent of that meat. Now I can give you gold and you'll give me the meat and then you can give me gold and I'll give you the bread and then we both still have gold to left to go over to buy the other things that we need and we won't have to exchange our meat, we'll exchange our gold. Make sense? Medium of exchange, all it is, a medium of exchange. And in stage one, that medium is simply gold and silver, it's free money, it's sound money, all of the gimmicks and the games don't exist yet. Okay, so guys, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something from this video. I hope we're all ready. I hope I've got you excited because this is going to get better. You are going to recognize our civilization in this whole cycle. Okay, so uh, I look forward to coming to you with video too, guys. Please stay tuned. I'll see you soon. All right.